If you can draw up that scripture, 2 Kings chapter 25, just three verses. I've been inundated with bad news last two weeks. Every, everything I get is somebody sick, somebody died, somebody's in hospital, somebody's broken, somebody's something, something, something. And I don't know if you've had bad news all, all week. But today I come to give you some good news. Some really good news. And I hope that, um, come on, say amen. I want you to get alive. Come on, come on, come on. I don't like to force amen out of people, but say it. And if you're going to say it, say it unto the Lord. Amen? Amen? amen. amen. Good, good. Uh, let me read. 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 27. Came to pass in the 37th year. This is 37 years. The captivity of Jehoiachkin, king of Judah. He was the king of Judah. In the 12th month, on the 720th day of the month. Why all the specifics on time? Interesting that the whole verse occupied the date, the day, the month, the year, the time. We can talk about that. On the 28th day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign. Now there are seven favors this guy is going to get. I want you to watch them. In the same year that the king evil, Merodach, the year that he began to reign, firstly did lift up the head of Jehoiakim. King of Judah, secondly, took him out of prison. Thirdly, and he spake kindly to him. Fourthly, and he set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon. Fifthly, and he changed his prison garments. Sixthly, and he did eat bread continually before him. All the days of his life. And seven. And his allowance was a continual royal allowance given him of the king a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. It was a year when evil Merodach became king. And the first thing noted in scripture that he did, among other things, he was an evil king. The Bible says that he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He and the generation of kings before him and after him. They all did evil. This man was punished by the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. They killed his wife and children. Took out their eyes in front of him and punished him severely. They put a hook in his nostril. And dragged him, walked him all those miles. He suffered. And then he stayed in prison for 37 years. How long have you been suffering? How long has it been that you've been expecting a change? And you cannot figure out. Why no change is coming? Why are you still where you are under the conditions that you're living in? Will anything happen for me? Will, will, will God ever do anything for me? You've been asking questions quietly. You've been pursuing prayerfully. You've been hoping patiently. And I have good news for you. I want to speak on the subject. The year or the time or the day or the season, whichever word you want to use, of accelerated favor. The key word is acceleration. That all of this that happened to this man happened in one day. And God can turn your situation around in one day, in one week, in one month, 
but he is going to turn it around. I am believing that beginning today, some of these favors will come your way. Accelerated favor. God will turn it around. Now, I am not a prophet and I'm not prophesying, but this word is a prophetic word. And I will use this word to prophesy into your future. Let the word of God dwell in you. Let this word come into your spirit so that you can believe and be, uh, expect something supernatural in these days of Elijah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This man was lost, his family was lost, his children was lost, his title was lost, his crown was lost, his throne was lost, his pride was lost, his health was lost for 37 years. But God is not concerned about time because he can reverse things. No matter how long you have been suffering, I want to pronounce a blessing on you. The suffering have an expiry date and it begins today. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Are you hopeful? Yes. Now, the first thing I want you to notice that this king of Judah came under a new authority. Nebuchadnezzar died and his son took over the kingdom. But he was called evil Merodach because probably the word evil here doesn't mean wicked, nasty, and bad. It means to be foolish. And so that maybe in his past he did some evil things and now he's reigning. Now, this is a point I want you who are employed. Maybe your boss is evil. Maybe your co-workers that surround you are evil people. They badmouth you. They wish to demote you. They have said all kinds of things behind your back. And so there is a new authority that seems like it's evil. But God is going to use whoever is above you to raise you up and to bless you. It doesn't matter who your boss is. Your boss is God. It doesn't matter where you work, your environment. God is in charge. And the favor of God giving you grace in a place of disgrace is the first act that's going to happen to you. Can you say amen? amen? This is a time of acceleration. It's going to speed up. Things were slow. Now and again, mercy drops were falling, but now it's going to be different. The rain is about to come. You will receive a flood of blessings. This is the word of God. I want you to put faith in the word and believe it can happen to you. Amen? amen? amen. So the second favor is that he took him out of prison. I don't know about you, but I feel that I have been locked down Locked up and sometimes locked out of things. I feel like I've been in prison for years. Because like Joseph, in prison, know you have a calling. Know that God is, 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 is going to answer you, but when? When will you come out of your prison? You've been locked in a situation that you've been trying to come out of and you can't. There have been shackles in your hands and, and on your feet like Joseph and you just can't break through. See, when Jesus broke the bread, somebody said he's not only a bread breaker, but he's a chain breaker. He doesn't break promises. He breaks chains. And whatever prison you find yourself, let's begin today. You will find favor number one and walk out of your prison. The authority from above will release you. It's a day of freedom. It's a day of release. It's a day of jubilee. Can I hear somebody say amen? Amen. The third favor, which I'm going to emphasize a little bit, is that he spoke kindly to him. 
a king talking to another king. He spoke kindly to him. Let me tell you, if you, I'm sure you have experienced that words can hurt. Whoever said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words cannot harm me, didn't, yeah, that's a lie. They didn't get a full, they didn't meet a Caribbean <laughs> who could give you a mouthful and hurt you so bad and insult you so terribly that you feel watered down, you feel beneath your dignity, you lose your self-esteem because people just crap on you and, and just pull you down. But he spake kindly to him. Speaking kindly to someone helps heal. You've got to understand that. When you're talking to somebody, don't rough them up. You don't know what they're going through. You get an opportunity to heal by speaking kindly and softly and gently. Amen. I put up a post one. The kindest words you ever said was the unkind word you didn't say. I say that again. The kindest word you ever said was the unkind word you didn't say. Don't say it. If you're not going to hurt somebody, don't laugh at them and talk them down. Don't do it. Speak kindly. You know, it's funny that when, when you're down, people think you, you have no value. Because you're having a bad season doesn't mean you're a bad person. Don't let people make you feel bad. Don't make people feel you less than who you are. You're a king. A king is talking to a king. Amen. The king might be down. The king might be in a low position. But God, the king of all glory, will raise his kings up. We are kings and priests unto God. And he will raise you up. Your rising up is coming today and starting today. You will. Arise, hallelujah. And so when, when, when people are down, don't step on them. Amen. Lift them up. Oh gosh, the world is so cruel. Should the church be cruel too? Why do you think it's called a sanctuary? Sanctuary is a place where you go for comfort. I always said and always felt that the church is the place where I am supposed to encourage you. I am supposed to make you feel through the word better than you came in. That when you walk out here, you should feel your worth and your value as God sees you. The world has beaten you up enough. And I'll make sure I pour in oil and wine in your wounds. He spake kindly to them. You know, some people, rougher than sandpaper. I mean, they mean well, you know. They, they, they're not badly intentioned. But it's just the way they are. And uh, we do need sandpapering sometime. But oh gosh, not every day. <laughs> give me a little break now. And give, give me some soft tissue. So... I'm admonishing you, when you're speaking to people, do like this supposedly evil king. Speak kindly, graciously. Let the words of your mouth be full with love and mean it from your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So who you are really is reflected in your voice and in your speech. You speak kindly to him. Then... Fourth favor is he set his throne above the throne of the other kings. There were many kings that were taken captive. But somehow the favor of God came upon the king of Judah. And this evil Merodach put his throne higher. Maybe next to his higher than the other kings. I am saying to you. That promotion is in your near future. 
I am saying that God is going to set you up higher than those that are around you. And that you will be visibly seen as the favor of God. When everybody wants to keep you down, God said, my time has come to lift you up. Remember, you're a king. You have a throne and you have a crown. And God is going to give you favor. Accelerated favor. It's going to happen so fast. You're going to get dizzy. See the blessings of God come your way. When God lifts you up, no man can pull you down. They can't. Because it's a favor of God. So let God lift you up. Fifthly, he changed his garment. He changed his prison clothes. You know that uh, when prisoners are out there, they have a special orange suit and you can identify them as prisoners. Well, in those days, they had prisoners who had special prison garments. And the king said, well, you, 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 you can no longer look like a prisoner. When God is giving you favor, he changes your look. He changes your outward appearance. You look better. You look stronger. You look prettier. You look lovelier. Because it's the grace and favor of God that's upon your life. God will change you from the outside because he already changed you on the inside. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid to dress up and come to church. Yes, ma'am. You're the best dresser we've got. Hallelujah. And so that when you change, when he changes your outward look, you will regain respect. It's funny how people respect others, you know. If you walk into an office shabbily dressed, they don't take any second look at you. But you walk in with a nice suit and, a, and, and, and well dressed, and they look at you. People tend to judge the outward appearance. And God said, if they're going to judge you, I'm going to make you look so good, they'll have to judge you with my favor and my blessing upon you. If they want to look, let them look. Because the favor of God is accelerating in your life. And almost done here. And he ate. He ate. He did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. This wasn't a, a meal that apologized for his suffering. This wasn't a one-time Sunday buffet. Come on, let me treat you for all the bad times you've had. You know what Psalms 90 says? I will bless you according to the days I afflicted you. And I will make you happy and make you glad according to the years that you suffered. God is going to restore every day and every year that you suffer. He is going to bring it back and give you great joy. You're going to have a royal banquet now. You have another table. And God will not. You see the people who uh, jealous you and envied you because you had a little Kentucky fried chicken. You move to another table. You move to a royal table and they cannot sit with you where you are sitting because you've been invited by the king. Your favor is coming from above. And you will say like the psalmist. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'd like to illustrate why let me just divert to that particular statement. When a shepherd sees green grass, especially certain areas where the grass is really fresh and green and looking lively, the shepherd knows that somewhere in that green patch, there is a viper inside there with a hole. That's because it's watered and they live in the cold places. And what the shepherd will do, he has an oil and his phosphorus and a mixture. And he will go 
and pour the phosphorus in the oil mixture right around the hole where the viper is. And because of the smell, the viper stays in the hole. And so the sheep can easily and fearlessly eat the grass around the viper. And if that protection wasn't there, the viper would snip his nose and kill him. That's why the, the sheep sang, uh, sing and the psalmist sings, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Let me tell you, when God ready to bless you, your enemies can't stop you. God, will pre God is preparing the table. This is a divine preparation for a promotion that's coming. Hallelujah. And finally, the king gave him an allowance. Money. For him to spend every day. He gave him a continual allowance given him of the king. A daily rate. For every day, all the days of his life. Let me tell you, your poverty is coming to an end. God is going to give you enough for every day. Your daily portion have already been assigned. And it's coming from the king's treasury. Can I hear an amen? amen. Oh, hallelujah. He's giving you an allowance. All the days of your life from now on, surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell continually in the house of the Lord. If somebody know what I'm talking about, can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The year, the time, the season, the day, the week of accelerated favor is going to happen so fast. You wouldn't be able to count your blessing on time. This is the word of God. This is not me saying it. It's written right here. If you believe it and you accept it and receive it, it will happen to you. In conclusion, the acceleration from an evil covering to, a, to God using that evil person or whoever it is. To bless you. Because God is not restricted. He doesn't need to have a righteous person around you or above you to bless you. When God wants to bless Elijah, he sends a raven. Greedy, greedy, the greediest of birds. He sent to feed them. God loves to contradict our environment. God loves to contradict the sinner's view of the, of the child of God. Your promotion is coming. Your covering, whether evil or unsaved, God is going to use to bless you. You are coming out of that prison. Your freedom is here today. God is releasing you now. Hallelujah. The glory of God is going to come upon you. You're going to look better. You're going to feel better. You're going to be healed. You're going to walk in strength and in the favor of God. Because it's accelerated favor beginning today, beginning now. If you believe that any one, not all, maybe one of these favors is what you've been looking for. Maybe your boss to give you a promotion. Maybe those who hate you to speak kindly to you. Maybe tomorrow you're that boss who always rough you up and always have something negative to say. Tomorrow you will hear him changed. His voice changed. Sweetness is coming. God's favor your promotion is guaranteed here in this verse. Your acceleration is guaranteed. Your good looks is guaranteed. He's changing your garments. He's taking you out of prison. He's promoting you. He's going to give you a, a meal, a royal meal. That, that's a healing meal. You're going to be on a better diet and your health is going to improve. Favor of God and he's going to give you continuous monetary supply. You will never be poor again. That's the word of the Lord. If you believe it and you want my prayer, kindly stand. I want to pray with you. Which, whichever one of these favors you feel you need in your life. I probably need all. I'm standing in the need of favor. I want divine favor. 
I thank God for the brothers and sisters who help us and bless us and bless one another. That's, that's favor too. God will use somebody to give you favor. Just as he used this king to give you favor, he will use somebody. And I don't care who the somebody is. You could be whoever you are. I don't care about the instrument. I want, I don't care what the male man looks like. I want my mail. And I'm sure you want that too. So we're going to say a little prayer of faith. Say after me, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard your word. It is your word. And I'm going to believe for what you said will come to pass in my life. I claim healing. I claim health. I claim continuous supply. I claim promotion. I claim your blessing. Too long, Lord. Too long, Lord. I've been suffering. Today is the end of my suffering. My journey begins. It's the year of accelerated favor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Could you give God praise? Could you believe God? Now what's going to happen? Those of you who need special prayer, come right here and the ministers will pray for you.